Okay, this is a walk to through talk through only of the Alinko LR2 mystery box. Um, hardly any information on this thing on the net. Um, I got it going. I made a video of that with a key down. And this one is just me talking, getting long winded, uh, talking about this amplifier. What little I know or don't know concerning the Alinko LR2. So, anyway, to get to it, this amp uses. Um, it has five 1625 tubes. Um, four tubes are used for the output or the power, and that fifth one there is the keying tube. Um, this early amplifier, I'm, I think it was pre transistor, or transistors hadn't came to fame, so these old amplifiers, many of them used a tube keying circuit. And again, it used uh, that big old 1625 there tube there, just that single one for the keying circuit only, uh, not a driver tube. Um, when I looked up the tube, the 1625, um, it was a popular 30 watt power tube during World War II. And then after World War II, they had a uh, ton of them for surplus. And builders and experimenters could get the tube for a penny uh, you know surplus 1625 so a lot of builders and hams and them started playing with them and using them for you know RF amps and audio amps and even modulator tubes um, and from Wikipedia the um, 1625 is basically a 6L6 uh, with the plate on the top I've said that a long time ago in another video and a lot of people, oh no, it's completely designed different, yada, yada, yada. Well, not really. Basically, the only difference between these type of tubes and the 6L6, and the 6L6 are used for audio and the um, 807-1625s are used for RF is because they took the uh, plate coming out of the bottom of the 6L6 and put on top. Because um, what they found is when you run high voltage or RF through a 6L6, since the uh, plate and all that high voltage was coming out to the bottom right next to the grids and the other pins of the tubes, that it would often short and react, you know, with our RF, you know, coming out, you know, along with the grid, with the power coming in and all that. That was not a good design. So all they do, did was move it from the top from the bottom to the top that way the RF and the high voltage are away from the pins and and the uh, grids and stuff coming out the bottom so that's the uh, main difference between these tubes and hence with that design change um, they use these tubes for RF and experiment at the higher frequencies versus the audio tubes only for the 6L6 the main difference between those tubes so since they, you know, could get them for a penny and they were, you know, here, there and everywhere back then, um, some experimenters used them for, again, building amplifiers like this one. This is a really rare Alinko LR2. Um, I picked it up because um, I wanted to see what it was made of. And up here at top, uh, it's nothing fancy, not, you know, just plain old um, regular output stuff here. Um, those uh, red covered things there, just resistors and the coil wrapped around. Those are parasitic chokes. And here's the schematic I made here. And just starting with the output, the uh, parasitic chokes here. Your plate choke, they used a pill bottle and, and wound the uh, wire around the pill bottle. You know, very economical there. Only use wire in an empty pill bottle. But that's your uh, plate choke right there. Uh, and then over here this is unplugged drained and all that for safety so I can safely put my finger in it even ran a wire across it to double make sure but um, that's your blocking cap and I've said this before but basically your plate choke lists the high voltage coming in here at the bottom that's your high voltage line from the power supply coming in and it goes through the choke and up and out and basically into the tubes so that's the high voltage that runs the tubes and what the choke does it safely lets the uh, high voltage come through um, DC 
does not mind going through that coil. It doesn't care to go straight through it. You know, no problem at all. But RF coming back down does not like to go through a coil like this. Um, even if you think about it, RF only goes through this um, tank coil when it's tuned properly. If you don't have it tuned properly, RF won't even go through here to get stuck in the tubes. And I say, you know, the tubes eat that RF or eat that power, right? So RF does not like to go through um, coils. It will go through this if you tune it for resonance. But if you got a proper um, choke, it won't resonate at the frequencies it was designed for. One of the problems they do have with uh, ham band chokes, since they have so many ham bands now, 10, 12, 15, uh, 17, 20, 40, 80, 160, if you got a multi-band um, choke like this, it can't be resonant on any of those bands. If it is resonant, the RF kind of makes its way back into the high voltage, and when that happens, you got a problem. You got a big bad boom pile problem, right? But you know, with single bands like uh, CB amps, you only have to worry about the 27 megahertz. Um, this not being resonant for that, and generally RF does not like to go back through that choke. So. It lets the high voltage come in, it blocks the RF, goes over to the tubes with the, um, through the parasitics and all that into the tubes. The tubes um, get the high voltage and when drive and ground it, they make RF. And the RF comes back down and goes to through the blocking choke. Now the blocking choke is the opposite of, the well, blocking cap, I'm sorry. It's the opposite of the choke here. The blocking cap now blocks the high voltage but lets the RF go through. Um, high voltage DC does not, you know, jump across a small cap like this. It blocks it. So it's stuck, the high voltage. But the RF, since it's going up and down at a high rate, it'll go right past that small cap. So it's the opposite of this. So the RF comes in through, and then you got the tank coil. And if it's tuned properly for resonance, the RF will go, you know, through the coil. And then out to the relay. If it's not tuned, the RF won't even go through here. So all that is stuck in the tube. So again, you always um, tune the tubes for maximum. Um, so anyway, schematic plate blocking cap right there. Your tune and loader underneath that. Those are these two um, knobs here go through your tune and load. That's underneath your tank coil here. And that's about all you're going to see here, you know, with the tubes. And then the uh, transformer, um, that's a new toroid I put in there. Here's the original transformer. It was bad. It used a swinging choke for filtering. This is a very early amplifier. Um, but since I had to replace the transformer anyway, um, I went ahead and used a capacitor bank instead of the uh, swinging choke. And at the end of the swinging choke was the... Um, a oil fill capacitor there so basically they use both that and that to filter out the uh, AC and to turn it into um, DC where I replaced both of these with uh, two you know modern 450 volt um, electrolytic capacitors and I got the um, toroid transformer with the correct voltage because the voltage is calculated or made difference with the swinging choke actually drops the high voltage where a uh, capacitor bank it actually um, adds to the high voltage so that's it on the top side oh before I turn it over that's the input tuner right there it does have a uh, input tune circuit and that's on the schematic right there okay and I try to flip her around with one hand and there we go this is the insides of the amplifier and I guess I'll flip my page and go over here to the power supply um, actually it's a pretty basic power supply I got the uh, swinging choke which they put in the negative lead which is kind of smart and then the uh, oil filled capacitor there even though I took those out, so that's no longer relative, but this is a reverse schematic I made of the amplifier because there's hardly no, um, nothing on the net for this um, amplifier. It had an 8-pin octal, 
right here that the um, AC plug plugged into um, I'm not using that um, and I just uh, wired in the um, AC coming in direct and that that's the um, mod I made for that so it's directly wired but here's the pin out this would be the plug the AC came in on pins 8 and 7 and then pin 6 and 3 were shorted that would have been the low voltage of the filament for that and that's the plug and this would have been the um, amp side of what's happening on the amp side of that but basically that your um, transformer single transformer your high voltage up here goes into the diode bank full way bridge that's your full way bridge right there um, out of that I got rid of the um, like I say the swinging choke and the cap and added those two caps there that's all I needed for it because it only runs at about 750 volts so I got two 450 volt caps in series and I put um, some bleeders on there too to bleed it down um, this little 1k resistor coming off the um, high voltage actually goes to that driver tube uh, not the driver tube I'm bad keying tube again that big giant tube only keys the relay so it doesn't need you know direct power or full power and they use that uh, 1k dropping resistor and here it is on the schematic this is the um, king two that's the 1k coming in and that's your um, driver your sensor coming in it senses that drive it drops the voltage you know through that resistor when every it senses drive it activates the tube it drops the voltage and it keys the relay keying tube only for that tube um, tune cap load cap this guy here is a choke that's the safety choke where is that blocking cap shorts and you don't want to have uh, DC you know running out of the amp and, and into your system and blowing up radios and and maybe killing you because the blocking cap shorted so most well designed amps is going to have this safety choke here the amp will run fine without it you take it loose uh, you won't see any difference or you shouldn't um, but again it's like a fuse if you take that out it's like bypassing a fuse it works fine until something happens and then you don't have the safety feature of it so that's just a safety choke uh, this here little trimmer cap only goes to the bulb this is the um, RF out indicator bulb your RF um, is connected to the RF out this is the coax you know going to the relay your RF out and then this little trim cap and then that's the bulb and what this trim cap do is it varies the the uh, light of the bulb coming out you can turn the, the um, bulb brightness up and down with this little trimmer cap kind of like a variable pot but it's a cap you know to adjust the lightness of the bulb that's your uh, on off um, light there this amp has neutralization and that's your neutralizing uh, cap there your neutralizing circuit um, that there stuff is your input tuning and that's your input um, tuning cap adjustment your uh, choke or coil for your input tuning that's your input tuning and I don't think I missed too much um, this stuff here in the tube here in the coil here that's your keying tube again just keys the relay and that's about all there is to this amp um, oh one thing I did want to say though what's weird it's two things that are weird one is this is a tetrode amp or actually a pinto but they drive both that would be grid one pin four and bin three would be grid grid two they buy they drive both the grids this is a drive coming in your input tuning cap and they drive grid one and grid two I've never seen that before I didn't even know that was possible but when I was looking up information on the 1625 tube early tube uh, made and designed in 1943 
it does say that you can do that with this tube you can dr drive grid one and grid two and that increases the gain some it's not a turbo but may have like a little uh, a little boost so um, less drive because well yeah it takes less drive higher gain because you're driving two grids which is very unusual like I said I didn't even know you could do it until I did a little reading on it but it's not turbocharged a full turbo you wouldn't drive uh, that second grid pin three you would put full voltage on it and that would be your turbo because that that full voltage is really uh, drawing the uh, electrons way up to the positive it's like boosting them up um, but having it doing a drive it just boosts the gain a little bit not a ton and that's how this amp gets away with not having any um, any drive or low drive instead of a driver tube um, and the other thing this amp does have that reverse preamp where it used this the amplifier tubes and the, and the chain and all that to um, amplify to receive and that's why you see the crisscross wires going here because in during receive the output of the amp you know goes to the input and and the input goes to the output and that's why you see this X pattern you know crisscross wires here uh, to do that um, the bad part about this is if you have the amp in line and since it's you know always going the input is always going to the tubes at all time uh, you're not going to get um, it to feed through whether it's transmit or receive if the amps in line it's got to be on and powered up for you to get any receive or for you to transmit to it if you actually try to transmit too much into this amp without it being on you're not going to get anything out and it may damage the amplifier because you're um, transmitting you know into the output circuit you know in reverse you know with these crisscross if that makes any sense but anyway that's about it for this amp for those who want to try to make a copy or the schematic or a picture I'm going to hold that up for a minute only thing strange again is it um, drives grid one and grid two on the input other than that it's pretty basic I don't have I didn't um, schematic out the reverse input and output X thing there because that would make it confusing with wires going everywhere and 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 trying to explain that so we um, just didn't do that that's your um, king tube not too hard and then last I'm just gonna put up the power supply again this is the original power supply before I you know I didn't show any mods on it how it was originally um, full way bridge on the high voltage um, swing and choke on the negative side and your oil fill cap there and then it's got two six volt windings in series to get 12 volts those are 12 volt tubes and then the center tap of the two six volt windings is hooked to only the um, the power on light and then the um, 8 pin octo connector there and the pin out on it and if you want to keep it original and make a plug for that that would what you would have on the um, plug side of that and that would be the socket side so anyway that's gonna be it um, and by the way this amplifier is weight rated at 150 watts from the manual so all this them big old 1625 is for a hundred watt amp 150 watt amplifier all right, that's it for this one. Bye.